Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to Tenerife. We've got Atletico Madrid for you today, along with the January transfer news and all the other bits and pieces that have happened since the last time we met. So it's been a long old time since we last met Liverpool away 1-1. Merckx and Madueke on the score sheets, appropriately. We smashed Midland as predicted 4-0, although I was kind of expecting more, to be honest, than 4, considering the away match was 5, I think. Yeah, 5. Fully rotated, it's all fine. A league loss has happened. Real Madrid destroying the hopes of an unbeaten season. They destroying. It was only one goal. It was a free kick. They also worried for the Valencia match, where they scored two goals from two shots. Uh, they had two more shots in the second half, thankfully. That didn't go in. But, yeah, FMing was happening. FMing was fully happening against Valencia. 25 shots, 12 on target, XG 2.61. 4 shots, 3 on target, 0.36. And yet, 3-2. I'm going to show you one transfer I've made. We've only signed, I think it's like 3 or 4 youth prospects, and that's about it. None of them are first team quality just yet. But one of them I am going to show you. Uh, Super Cup, meanwhile, 2-0-0 penalty wins. I'm so glad I didn't bring you that now, because... Jesus Christ, that was boring. Consider, considering this tournament happens in the Middle East, I feel sorry for anyone who went to it. Imagine traveling all that. Imagine traveling all that way from Spain to watch your team play the other big Spanish teams, and then two nil nil penalty wins. For the player of interest, and I'm gonna go with Lucien Ducadin. I don't know how you pronounce that V. I've never seen that letter used ever. I'm gonna go with Ducadin. I went in for him 18 months ago, and he declined and signed a new contract with Rijeka. Now, 18 months later. He was unhappy and wanted to move to a bigger club. Like, I offered 18 months ago for that to happen for you, mate. But he's played 18 games with Yekka in the meantime. One per month, seemingly. And he's here. He will be coming through on that left-hand side over time. We'll be in the B team just for the remainder of the season because we've still got three left-wingers at this stage. But £12 million up front. Slightly more if he starts playing games. This is what This is one to keep an eye on going forward. He's already rather good, particularly for a two-star player. So some of these mentors are a little bit lacking, a little bit lacking on the all-roundedness and the stamina. Other than that, he's something special. I'm glad I actually got him in. He's one of those ones that I could have forgotten about, and he could have ended up at another major club. Came back on my radar because of that wanting to wanting to leave, thankfully, and I snapped him up. We had a we've had a couple of other ones, one from Bulgaria, but they're all B team level at best at this stage. So. We'll move straight on to the table. The table's on the right-hand side. It's a big day today. It looks like everyone plays today, actually. We are well clear. The one loss means we are seven points clear. And that's it. Yeah, uh, San Sebastian have fallen right away. They're no longer, they're not even in the top four anymore. Barcelona, Atletico, Valencia, San Sebastian, Real Madrid. Atletico sorted themselves out as well, by the way. They're in the top four again. Real Madrid are sixth now. It's nice there's an actual fight for fourth. Meanwhile, at the other end, Bronya have two points. Life in the top flight has not gone well for them. What a return for Deportivo La Coruña. What a return. Catafri in the bottom three, by the way. Uh, they were in the Champions League last year. So that's gone spectacularly wrong for them. But our lineup here is largely implicated because of the injuries to both of our main left backs, which means Christian is in goal. Harwood returns to his original position of left back temporarily. Quiros, Picard, Bermudez at right back has not had a great first season. You would think the fact he speaks Spanish naturally would help with the acclimatisation, but no, apparently not. In fact, actually, Ned is on a 7.13 for the season. He starts. McDonald and Ravella. Valverde, are you alright, buddy? No, okay. Faisal, Grealish, Burks. Maxigo is up front. <sighs> Grealish, is, Grealish is an odd one. His average is surprisingly not awful, considering the fact that every time I look at his last five ratings, it's 6.5 or 6.6. I don't really understand it. I started Lionel Messi against the third tier team that we played in the Spanish third round. Imagine being a third tier side in a cup and you play Tenerife and Lionel Messi starts against you. Imagine Lionel Messi starting in a cup match against a third tier team. What an experience that was for them. We beat them 7-0, Messi didn't score a goal, but by all good he got three, which is why his average rating for the season is 9.7 because it's the only match he's played. The idea is though that Duke Adin will be the long-term deputy to Grealish. Because Grealish is 29. I don't know when he turns 30, but he's 29. So we've got two or three years in him still. So Dukadin can sort of develop behind him and then take his place eventually. That's the idea. And Kor and Zukic are already sort of at their potentials at this stage. 
and we're kind of looking to move them on. I was kind of hoping someone would come in for them in January. I wasn't actively trying to sell them. But I was kind of hoping someone would just make a bid, particularly Core, of course, because we picked him up on a free transfer originally. I did notice that Atletico Madrid had our former player, Oikonomo, on the bench. I genuinely thought he was going to be one of those players that just fizzled out. But he's made their bench. Part of the reason why I sold him, because I figured he would just go for a free at the end of his term. Maxi Gomez on the end of this. He's not scored all that many, but 10th of the season. Puts his ahead against Atletico. The assist by Picard, the centre-back, of course. I mean, that's great work. Great work from Picard. I just wanted to watch that in its entirety. Lovely vision from Picard. Picard signed a new contract. It's well ahead of schedule for Picard to get a new contract. His original contract was still to 2029. <laughs> His release fee was only, and I say only, 80 million. His value was just shy of 50 million at the point I gave him a new contract. It was one of those ones where I figured if someone comes in for him, they might pay the 80 million. It's like the merit situation where his value was about two thirds, and eventually bids got pushed up to 60 million and his release fee was triggered. So I figured just to, just to stop Picard going anywhere, because bear in mind he came from the second tier of France and he'd been playing there for three years without anyone nicking him. I thought 80 million was a, you know, a decent, decent price tag on that. But he's developed and he's become arguably one of the best players in our team. Merckx has scored. Arguably the actual best player in our team. Oh, speaking of, Merckx scores Golden Boy last year. Faisal is Golden Boy this year. We've had back-to-back -back Golden Boys, but with different players. I don't even know how Merckx gets the he header on that. I swear he goes through the head of the other player. But he scored, nonetheless. Nowhere near as prolific as he was last year, either Merckx. Don't know what's going on there. Let's go acquired Yusuf Demir, by the way. In case you noticed that on their team sheet, I'm just going to call it out. It's not the best use of Demir I've ever seen. He would be a starter, probably, for my team, but not ahead of Merckx, anyway. But he, he is leading He is leading La Liga level. What on earth happened here? Maxi Gomez is in. Oblak saves. I think this is the first time we've actually played Oblak in about three years. He's always injured when we play Atletico for some reason. Oh, speaking of injuries when we play Atletico, Christensen was injured, Christensen was injured for the Real Madrid match. Part of the reason why we lost because we conceded that free kick. It was actually a bad end goal for that. But for two seasons in a row, Christian has been injured for the away match at Real Madrid. I don't know why it keeps happening. It's always the important matches that Christian was injured. He was injured before the first round of the Super Cup as well. He was just back in time, I think, for that one. So I played him. He saved penalties in both the penalty shootouts, so that worked out. There was a shout of a penalty there, but it, I think it was declined. I wasn't paying full attention. I was in full-on story mode. Perez clears that. But after troubling starts, Grealish and Gomez are actually having good old games here. Nice to see. Faisal's last few haven't been great. Merckx's last few haven't been great. But it's nice to see all of them having great games. Harwood is knackered. At 2-0, there is the consideration for being Cancelo on. Adelaide comes forward. Gomez, well over. I like the fact that Cancelo can play blindly. They've literally not had a shot on target. Their only shot happened there. I didn't actually realise this was such one-way traffic. Apparently, Maxi Gomez is demotivated by the idea you need to show them the media were right about you. Never had... What? And I can't turn him around with any... Fa what on earth happened to Maxi Gomez there? How bizarre. Doesn't get an end on that one. Sorry, is that Joe Gomez? It is Joe Gomez for Atletico. Okay. The Premier League player... The English Premier League player trend hasn't stopped, apparently. Abraham on the end of this one and scores literally their version on target, because of course it is. 14 goals for Tammy. Not been a bad season for him. It's a good ball through. It's almost identical in terms of the ball through from the Picard uh, through ball, but great finish from Abraham. Beats Christensen, who won goalie of the year, or golden glove. Goalie of the year and golden glove were different people, which I feel like shouldn't happen, but it did. Christensen got the golden glove, but didn't get the starting spot in the world, world team 11. But that one out. Least goals conceded in 2021. Uh, least goals conceded in 2024. Doesn't make, the, doesn't, make, doesn't make the first team in the world team 11. Merritt was third. And he, won the and he won the Champions League. Well, that one out. Anyway, Grealish is... I don't know why it's happened to Grealish. He was having a really good first half, and now he's below a seven. Zukic, Harwood's the only one that's happy. Cancelo and Zukic on change that left-hand side. Atletico at least have, have had a few more shots than just that one, thankfully. Edelair, Zukic, back post, over. Nearly scores immediately. Well, there's two really tired players, but they're having decent games. with Vela and Merckx, and Quiros is in or not having a good game, and he's actually... Fittest of the lot that started. 6.3 from Quiros. There's a reason why you don't start anymore, buddy. You can fix every problem You can fix every problem with the team, but you're not a starter. Good tackle from Picard. 
Little air. Back in was to Kreros. Don't make that rating any worse. <laughs> Fires on the ball. Plays it out to Mox. He's got a bit of space. He's given it. Don't really know what happened there. I just expected Mox to kick on, smack it in there. Zukic gets the ball from a throw in. McDonald dinks it in. No one's there. Mox back to Gomez. Mox, Gomez, Mox. Mox has put it in. Yeah, only goal number seven from Mox for the season. We are in February now. Not exactly been free scoring. Apart from. Apart from the few European games and the match against the third tier team in the cup, not exactly scored a great deal. Is that two goals for Mercs? Oh, great. I can't sub him off now either. <laughs> just in case he nicks a hat trick. But a 3 1, I think I'll just. Oh, it's injury time. Sorry, Valverde comes on for literally two minutes. But 3 1 over Atletico. Barcelona, game in hand at this stage. 10 points behind. Can get it back to seven. Oh, Spanish Cup fifth round. Forgot that follow this. It's Real Madrid. I think we've got time for it. Obviously, when I planned ahead, I figured there'd be transfer news, but nope. Why are we training all day beforehand? Speaking of release clauses, I am slightly concerned of Moxes, which is 110 million, which is a surprisingly high amount to be concerned about. We did have one bid from Chelsea, which was around 80 million. Don't think it's outside the realms of possibility that someone would come in with 110 in the summer, particularly if Moxes isn't a good second half of this season. This is why you don't let the assistant manager do things. It's the only reason for doing press conferences. No, Mox is not available. And off deals with Harwood. I love having an enforcers. El Queso Mechanico. That doesn't translate to what I think it translates to, does it? Queso isn't cheese, is it? It's not like mechanical cheese or something stupid like that. And I thought our nickname was weird. I didn't realise Marcus Gerardo Garcia was the captain of Tenerife B. What a responsibility for the youngster. He's 17. Just an update on Tenerife B. Uh, not as much in trouble as they were before. They have been in the relegation spots for quite a while. They actually sacked the BT manager, which in theory shouldn't be possible because on the responsibilities list, staff-wise, I'm the one responsible for hiring and sacking BT managers. But he got sacked. I had to find a replacement that was as good, which is annoyingly difficult for BT managers. The one I had in was, attribute-wise, the best, the best there was. Just to show you my BT manager... This guy is marginally worse than the manager we had before. Just marginally. He's almost as good. Actual manager of Reading last year. Or this year. But he's glad to be in Tenerife. I don't know if this is a problem with the coding, but for some baffling reason, the Spanish transfer window closes before the rest of Europe. I don't know if this is an actual thing or not, but I get through my deadline day, and then a day or two later, I have to click through about 17 times just to get through the actual deadline day. But it happens in both January and the summer. It's really annoying. I suppose it would help to cut my shortlist down a little bit. By the way, in case you're wondering, the 2026 Youth Candidates preview is bafflingly short. Considering we should be starting to see the developments on the youth side of things come to fruition at this point, I don't really understand why there's so little information about it. There's a lot of wingers. It's a good group. No defensive midfielders. No attacking midfielders, thankfully. We don't play them. The central midfielders, not good enough. That's fine. We play one of those. And wide midfielders, not great either. Just a lot of wingers and some good players. I don't know where the good players are then, considering the fact there's barely anything of anything else. Excuse me, Mariano. There was literally no interest in you. Don't appreciate the fact that you're calling me a liar. That being said, I signed him as a backup on a pre-contract deal. Cost me nothing. If I sell him on for anything more than 10 million, that's a nice little profit. I signed him before Maxi Gomez was available for decent money, and then, fairness, he's not been brilliant. Although... Kicking on a little bit now. Really had a decent game. And I say decent. I need my left backs available. Thank God for that. Quiros, get out of the team again. Same start on 11, just with Renan Lodi back at left back. And Harwood back in the middle. Ariel Faf there. Just going to play strong here. Tony Cruz is still there. Now, is Tony Cruz one of those players I think is older than he is just because of his low speed values on FIFA? That's generally, that's generally how I work this stuff. I can't see the bench. So if they bring him on, I'll find out. Actually, I can go this way. No, I can't, because there's a highlight first. Mercs, players in... Oh, boys is offside. I'm pretty certain he's offside. Saved anyway. And actually, no, he did stay onside. The angle probably not helping there. Rella, never mind. Grealish handled the ball, apparently. We go by the bench to get Cruz's... No, he is 36. He is as old as I thought he was. Jesus Christ, he's almost as slow as Messi is. 20 passing, though. There's no real prospects for end-of-contract deals this year, by the way. I've not gone for anyone yet. We also bird it with a free kick. And the towel over. We played the we played the AI at their own game actually a, a couple of matches ago. We scored a wonderful short free kick, which were really overpowered at the beginning of this game cycle. I don't know if they actually did anything about that. But the AI would always do 
a short free kick and they would score the majority of them. It was really irritating at the start of this game cycle. I guess they did fix it because I don't think I've seen it in quite a while. The players started doing it and uh, it worked out for me the other match. So it's Maxi Gomez versus Vlahovic, who is the other option and cost twice as much for Real Madrid. It's a little irritating that Vlahovic is sort of rated much more than Maxi Gomez is now. I don't know how prolific he's been for them. We should check. Emre Buendia going, just going for a walk, really. How is Vlahovic doing? Three and a half star, worth 55 million. He's scored nine. 12 and 24 starts in total. Meanwhile, Maxi Gomez is 10 in 20 starts in total. Basically exactly the same. And he cost me half as much as, well, less than half as much, I think. The Vlahovic costs Real Madrid. It's nil nil at half time. It's utterly boring. But we are, we are due a goal, apparently. Adelaide's not had a good game. Faisal to Gomez. We've intercepted that. Merck's on the right-hand side, charging forward. Plenty of space for Merck's. I can see a run from the other winger. Taking a little bit of time to get the ball in. Immediately a penalty. It was a clean tackle. It's got out for a corner, but we'll take the penalty. Maxi Gomez steps up. Maxi Gomez misses. No, he scores. Okay, thankfully. Just try to bait that one there. I, try, I think he's missed penalties so far as Maxi Gomez. But that one, assured... Couldn't have, couldn't have lasered that into that back corner any better than he did, really. I'll take that. Yeah, did later on 6.4. Mirez on. The booking also forces my hand there a little bit. Uh, Merck's tired. Merck's is always tired. I don't know what the Merck's thing is, by the way, Tyler. I still haven't worked it out. I don't know why he gets more tired than anyone else on this team. But McDonald now, edge of the box. Going to go for it. He did, but it bounced back. Bermudez. In, Bermudez. I can speak. It's another penalty. Uh, that one looks... That one looked more of a penalty because of the way the ball bounced afterwards. That one's saved. There we go. He's not great at penalties. He does miss an alarming amount of them. I should take him off him. Oh, and then he scores from the resulting corner. Our XG is now three because of the two penalties. I'm right, bringing Kyoto on because just because I can't... I, don't, I hate the fact that my two most tired players are the two best rated for this match, but Merckx is going to have to come off. Although that's been a lovely ball through to Maxi Gomez and that's almost an identical goal from the first game. That was Picard who punted that through, right? Resorting corner, Ravella on it. The linesman nearly gets in the way with a run up there. Linesman's nearly in the way of that throw in. McDonald on the edge of space, edge of the space, kicks it over anyway. Edge of the box in plenty of space. That's just two centers that merged into one there. They've had two shots and none on target. So an equalizer is about to happen, I, I imagine. Faisal's angry again because, of course, he is. Screw it, Messi's coming on. It's Real Madrid. He knows what to do. I've started bringing him. I've started bringing Messi on in Faisal's role. Sort of dictating that, dictating that play from the centre midfield. Nothing else happened. I mean, it was a good win, but we got away with it. <laughs> we really got away with that. Well, that's one of the big boys out of the Spanish Cup, the Copa del Rey. Only four teams remain, of course. Sevilla is one of them. Barcelona and Espanyol, I just noticed there before it disappeared. Keeping an eye on Neymar, by the way. He was unhappy. Well, he's still asking to leave, although he just said he's got over himself. I thought his contract was up at the end of this year. It isn't. That's annoying. Was genuinely trying to get them both in, I'm not going to lie. Just want to do the draw before I go. Sevilla versus Tenerife. Now that was a draw I was kind of hoping to get because there's something amusing about to happen with Sevilla. Uh, obviously Espanyol would be the easiest team out of the four. Well, Sevilla obviously <laughs> relegated last year. Technically the easiest team. They did keep most of their players. kunde has gone to Spurs, which is confusing me in the real world because he's going to Chelsea. I said that, I said that in my uh, Premier League predictions thing. I keep thinking he's going to Spurs, but he's going to Chelsea. But they kept their forward players. Pretty much. But there's an interesting thing because tomorrow in game, Sevilla play the Tenerife B team in the league and then they play the A team in the semi final of the Spanish Cup, which is kind of amusing. They're not even top of the they're not even top of the second division. Granada hold that. Anacrasco is just destroying the second division. Fifteen assists. I kinda wish I'd kept Acardi just for him to assist Acardi in this division. Before you think that's super weird. Physically, he's kind of gone off and he's only on 25k a week, so it's not horrendous to keep him around for this purpose of keeping the B team in the second division. If his performances keep my B team in that division, worth it. But that's a two-legged monstrosity for some reason. The Copa del Rey. Just eyeing at the end of March, Milan at home, San Sebastian away from home. Might be the best place to bring you back. I'll do the away leg of the Champions League, and then I'll bring you back for the home leg with San Sebastian, who were there or thereabouts. Saucy dad. Still there or thereabouts. They might be back in the picture at that time. So we'll see. So that's both Madrid's dealt with. That lined up quite nicely. I love it when that happens. Until next time, thank you for watching. Well.